Lamont Peterson was knocked out against Lucas Matisse in three rounds. He was knocked down a tremendous amount in that fight. We thought that it would be an absolute slugfest potential fight of the year candidate. Instead, Lucas Matisse spoiled the show for all of us, knocking him out in the third round. Now, Lamont Peterson is coming back from a knockout and knockdowns that a lot of fighters simply do not rebound from, but he is quoted as saying repeatedly in the pre-fight pressers that, you know what, it took me about a day, I'm over it, you guys in the media are still talking about it, but I'm over it. Well, with the track record that boxers have being knocked out in that way that he was, it's questionable if he can return. Now, this is going to be his second title defense. He did not lose that fight because it was at a catch weight. So he keeps his belt. He's fighting Dierry Jean, who has, I believe, a year on him. But uh, Lamont Peterson is the bigger fighter. He is the taller fighter. But let me ask you this. What exactly do you expect in his return, Robert? I expect a slow start because I've seen slow starts before from, from Peterson. But Peterson is an incredibly resilient character. Peterson would not be, we don't, would not be talking about Lamont Peterson if you were in a resilient character. Uh, you know, him having been knocked out for us is sort of the end of the world, but uh, Peterson's life has been a series of knockouts and he has, from the time he was a child, and he always gets up, always dusts himself off, and always gets back into the fray. So I'm expecting him to take, uh, to, to sort of, you know, feel out Jean, uh, maybe a slow start, uh, we'll be chasing him much of the time, and I believe he's gonna catch them, catch him before it's over. I could be wrong, could be a decision, but I'm, I'm, I'm leaning toward uh, Lamont Peterson, perhaps because he's a known quantity, uh, but I'm leaning toward Peterson. So what you're saying is, and I'm reading between the lines, but what you're saying is you anticipate possibly a decision, as you said, but also if he catches him, it could be in the later rounds like the ninth or 10th round, would you say? Correct. Okay, uh, just wanted to clarify that. By the way, he is the taller fighter. He is five foot nine. Zierry Jean, who does not have a fantastic track record and a, re a great, great resume like Lamont Peterson, is five foot seven. Now we all know his rough upbringing. The fact that he has been through more than many of us will ever go through in our lives should not be undermined and understated at all. But in 2012, he did have high levels of testosterone. He was going to have a rematch with Amir Khan, and he did not because of those high levels. And to no surprise, Amir Khan backed out of that fight, rightfully so. 31, 2 and 1, 16 knockouts for Lamont Peterson. Do you anticipate him being gun shy at all, Robert? I do not. I do not. Again, you know, I know Peterson somewhat, and I, I do not. I'm Peterson's a, a serious character, a serious and dignified character. I don't expect him to be gun shy. Uh, he knows that knockouts are part of this game. I mean, all fighters know that knockouts are part of this game. Uh, it happens. The great fighters, the good fighters, get up, dust themselves off, and they get back to work. Uh, it's sometimes at the other end when a fighter actually knocks someone out or injures them or, God forbid, kills them. I mean, that has a greater effect on a fighter than having been knocked out himself. Now, the fight is in D.C. That certainly helps Lamont Peterson immensely. Uh, Dierry Jean, by the way, he is undefeated. He is the older fighter, as I stated previously, 31 years old. He started boxing at the age of 18, so he started a little late, but it is only his third time fighting outside of Quebec. So you are going with Lamont Peterson. I'm going to go with Lamont Peterson as well. The undercard also shows talent against a rugged, hard-nosed fighter in Jermel Charlo against Gabriel Rosado. What do you think about that fight, Robert? Excellent fight. I'm really looking forward to it. Both of these guys are good fighters. I would, I would watch Rosado fight with his wife. Um, he's a terrific no, you fighter. Wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> well, maybe perhaps not. But he's an excellent fighter, a really great fighter. Uh, he's sort of been the sort of the stepping stone. He's, he's sort of been an opponent. He really got started late in this game, but he never gives less than his all. Charlo, major talent. You know, could be, you know, superstar of the future. We don't know. Uh, but again, he's stepping it up. He's stepping it up against somebody who is, you know, tough as nails, comes to fight, no quit whatsoever, not an ounce in Rosado. Uh, I'm expecting a hell of a good fight. Jermel Charlo is undefeated, 22-0, 11 knockouts. He's 23 years old from H-Town, the home of Zero and Trey, of course, and Lil Flip. And uh, Gabriel Rosado, 28 years old from Philadelphia, like Danny Garcia, 21-7, and 7, 13 knockouts. Uh, Rosado has shown me a lot. Charlo has shown me some. I don't know if Charlo is going to be either Charlo, Jermel or Jamal, are going to be the starlit fighters of the future. Uh, I like them. I think they have a ton of talent. They have a ton of potential. I guess we will have to wait and see on Saturday night. Um, I believe you. Did you give a prediction, Robert? Did you take uh, Did you take Charlo in this fight? 
I, I do. I mean, I'm leaning toward Charlotte. He's certainly the house fighter, the favorite fighter in this in in this fight. It's hard to sort of pick against him. But I uh, thought it was a bit of a wild card, which is what makes this fight interesting. All right, there you have it. Robert Axel, the editor-in-chief of Boxing.com. Follow him on Twitter at Boxing underscore com and follow his great writing at www.boxing.com. Robert, thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon.